Hey everybody, this is Craig Cottle, Director of Nature Line School, coming to you today with a very special treat. My good friend Tally Hunt, who has come to a few of our classes at Nature Line School and has been my backpacking and hiking teacher in many ways. She, she is our big go-to person to tell us about backpacking, and she's constantly answering questions, which she, she does, happily about backpacking, so I thought I'd get her on camera to answer some questions for you all. Uh, I've got a bunch of questions already, and we really appreciate you being here, number one. First question I have for you is, what would be what you would consider essential gear or essentials for backpacking or hiking and stuff of that nature? Okay. A map and right. a compass. So you need to have a good map of wherever you're planning to go. And so the navigation part, I usually keep my map kind of up here where I can grab it out of my backpack. And my compass is right here in my hip belt so that it also it's very accessible to me. I'm going to reference it pretty frequently whenever I come across a side trail. I want to make sure I'm on the trail that I'm intending to be on. Right. I don't end up somewhere. We just it. talked about that in survival class. So <laughs> you're good. Perfect. Yeah. Yep. I've learned a lot of things from, from you from survival <laughs> class, and that has informed what I put in my backpack. Um, obviously, whatever I have on me right now, and I'm going to be ready for rain, which is right. starting to rain here right now. Right. So, so do you my, wear rain pants? Do you take I, rain pants? I bring them with me. Okay. Uh, I have a rain jacket that's pretty lightweight, and rain pants in this side pouch, and also a pack cover. If okay. I know it's going to be raining, I also bring, I always bring a couple of extra garbage bags to put my tent and especially my sleeping bag inside of to keep those dry. So, so who, who makes that rain gear? This particular one, I think is called, oh, this is Outdoor Research. Okay, cool. Good um, stuff. I just, I have a few different ones mm -hmm. that I like. This one I really love because it's super light. So for summer, it's nice. If, it, if I'm going to be somewhere where I'm going to be generating a lot of heat, it's nice to have the one with pit zips so right. that I can get more ventilation. This one doesn't have that, but it's really lightweight. So. Gotcha. Um, I also personally like to bring bike sleeves. Um, yeah. Then I can hike. For your legs or your arms? For my arms. Yeah. Um, when I'm hiking, I obviously you're up and down hills. You tend to get really warm. Yeah. And I like to have a layer that I can take on and off without having huh. to take off my backpack. Oh, so cool. I really like these sun protection so I usually bring a hat here in Kentucky it's not quite as critical as if I were in the desert or hiking um, at altitude or on snow where you know sun protection is can be life-saving yeah, critical. Cool. next thing would be food food is pretty important uh, I always keep a snack in my hip belt handy and usually a handful in a ziploc bag is enough um, so you eat that on the move? Yeah. A lot? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sometimes I'll actually stop. I like to cover a lot of just, I like to hike long distances, so yeah. I don't stop very often. Um, but, you know, for some people, stopping frequently is important to them. So You I, don't have to tell me or show it right now, but. I have uh, nuts. Always have something salty because you're, you're drinking water that doesn't have any electrolytes in it typically, and you want to keep salt in your system, mm -hmm. especially if it's hot and, and humid outside sugar so i have a bit of honey i really like those for me because i'm a little bit of a caffeine addict i always have like chocolate covered espresso beans or something with caffeine <laughs> in it yeah that's... just for that afternoon kind of two o'clock oh my god oh I man i, I don't want to go any farther yeah, yeah. i can't make my feet work anymore so yeah i always have that right where i can grab it cool water also i have right where i can grab it yeah. um, i like to have a hydration system where i don't have to stop to drink is this the only hydration you carry, or do you carry something else in here, too? Of course I carry something else. <laughs> are you kidding? These are my camp shoes. I'm going to just take those out of the way because okay. I also like to keep my water where I don't have to get into the body of my pack. So I have a filtration system, and this one is a pump system. Uh, a lot of people really like the Sawyer squeeze bottle. It's mm -hmm. very popular right now. Um, and I also always bring a second way to carry water. Good. Often if I stop to filter, I don't want to have to dig my camelback out of here. So I'll filter into this and use it later. Gotcha. And that's um, a platypus, I'm guessing. Yeah. And sometimes, um, especially with the squeeze system, it's really hard to get the water into the bags. Like, it's really hard. If you have a stream that has really low flow, it's hard to fill this bag up. Right. So I have this little thing that is a dry bag, 
and you can use it to blow up your air mattress, and you can use it to carry water. <laughs> it's a pretty sweet little... Yeah, I've got one too. Never thought about carrying water with super it, Super lightweight cool. thing, and sometimes if I don't want to sit right next to the stream, I'll fill it up, hang it on a tree, and sit and pump the water. I have my main water, and then inside, I have my stove with the rest of my food. Okay. Um, during the day, I'll have my lunch up here with my map uh, that I can just reach up and grab. Um, and you do that on the move, typically? Lunch, yeah, I'll, too? I'll usually stop and eat lunch. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. I will stop for that. What kind of stove do you have in there? It's a Snow Peak. Okay, so it runs off liquid gas. I mean, yeah, uh, it, yeah it the canisters. It canister. Gotcha. It folds out a little tripod. I really love it. It makes me feel... I mean, I can sit down cool. and boil water. Yeah, it makes yeah. me feel super cool. <laughs> it does. Yeah. I, I was backpacking once on the Appalachian Trail, and this girl who was a thru-hiker came, came in and she was chatting with us the whole time and her trail name was sunshine or something and she was what's your trail name by the way suga T-S-U-G-A, the yeah. the um it's the latin name for the hemlock trees oh really because they're my favorite trees okay cool yeah, okay i'm sorry i interrupted there's you. a story that goes with that but okay anyway um so she sat down and was chatting with us and made this whole she made her dinner Put her, put her stove together, lit it, made dinner without stopping her stream of conversation. And I was like, I want to be that girl. <laughs> She's my hero. Yeah. And there so you go. Now cool. I'm, I'm, now I'm that girl. I'm pretty, I feel pretty awesome. Nice. Um, what else are we looking at Okay, so we got food and water. We've got navigation. And then I want other uh, insulation besides my rain gear. Okay. I always carry a thermal layer. Um pants, uh, thermal underwear, mm -hmm. basically, and that's my sleep system. Okay. So I keep it in a bag inside of a um, stuff sack Okay. so that I have something that's always dry that I can put on at the end of the day, right. and it's also my emergency layer if I get really cold gotcha. because it's wool. If okay. it gets wet, I'm going to be okay. And then depending on the time of year, this time of year I would bring another long sleeve shirt in addition to, this is a short sleeve shirt, mm -hmm. I would bring pants that I could put on over these, just day pants. I always hike in pants because I really hate ticks. I always bring a puffy coat, uh, mm -hmm. unless it's 90 degrees outside, because I mean, if the temperature comes down and you get wet, you're going to be really cold. So okay. I want to when you say layers. puffy coat, for those that don't know, you're probably talking about some sort of down or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Whenever I have a jacket, I have gloves and either a hat or just a buff that I can use as... What's a buff? It's a... You might call it something else. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. I can use it as a scarf. Yeah. I can use it as a balaclava at night if my face is cold. Yeah. Um, it has kind of a lot of different uses. I can use buff? it as a hat. You call that a buff? Mm -hmm. huh. Yeah, it's just a little stretchy. You know what I call it? What do you call it? I call it a buff now. Okay. Because <laughs> right, I didn't know what the name of it was. <laughs> That's awesome. It's not what I call it. What else are we looking at down in there? Um, so then I have my sleep system. I have a tent. A lot of my friends use hammocks instead. They prefer that. They're more comfortable that way. I, I often hike with my dog, and I can't imagine her in a hammock. Yeah. She would not go to that point. So I use a tent. I have a sleeping pad. And there's lots of different ones. I learned when I was hiking in the winter that there is a thing called R value that is the amount of insulation. Right. And if you're sleeping on snow, you're going to want one with a lot of insulation. Right. Um, and they and they make a lot of people don't know, but they make and I, I know you do, but we'll just point it out for everybody. They make pads with uh, down in them now and any number of different substances in them to to increase that R value. Yeah, gotcha. Um, and then I have my sleeping bag. I like to use a sleeping bag liner also mm -hmm. um, in the summer. I what bring, is that? Fleece or wool? Or? It's mine is fleece. Sorry. Yeah. In the summer, I'll use it as a sheet and just sleep on top of my sleeping bag okay. if it's too warm. Yeah. In the winter, it's an extra layer of insulation to keep me warmer than my bag would alone. And always, it keeps my bag cleaner so I don't have to wash it as often. And then I can just unzip it but still feel kind of covered oh, cool. and warm. Nice. Yeah. Is that it for the essentials? Close? No. What are we missing? We're missing first aid. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Funny coming from you. Yeah, super important, right? <laughs> so in here, also in what I call my loft, I have my first aid kit. I like to try to keep it. I, I lead groups, so this is probably a more extensive kit than normal people would need. Yeah. Um, a way to stop bleeding, 
I've got medications, ibuprofen, Pepto-Bismol, Tums, because mm. if I have something spicy at night, I'll wake up. Right. Um, I've got a flashlight, a little small flashlight in here. I've got something to write with. I've got tweezers, some bandages, and triangular bandage. Because they don't fit in there, I also always carry a uh, splint. And I, it like fits, a Sam splint? Mm -hmm, it fit, fits really well where my camelback goes. Ah, okay. So I always keep it in that pouch with my camelback. I've got a tourniquet in there also. You know, I lead groups. So. And what do you do for a living? What do I do for a living? Yeah, I'm, so a physi I'm a physician assistant for a living. Okay. Um, but I do have a side job with a women's adventure travel company. So I lead I lead trips maybe three times a year. Yeah. Um, I just want to bring that up because what you say about medical advice is important for people to hear, I think. I mean, because you have an educated opinion, not just... Yeah. Some, some there's, buddies. there's lots of ways to, to get that training too and I've, I've done some of that and then uh, illumination is very important mm -hmm. um, so I always actually carry two headlamps okay tools are important I actually have my hiking poles okay. I always hike with hiking poles um, I tend to trip on things if I don't <laughs> um, and I put uh, duct tape around my hiking poles so that I have my duct tape always available to me the other tools that I always carry are a couple of ways to start a fire. In with my stove, I have a lighter. I always carry a lighter on me. This is something that I learned from your class when we had mm -hmm. to start a fire with sticks. And it was super fun, but really, really hard. Yeah. And then I have my knife. This particular knife was decorated by a friend of mine. Oh, cool. Isn't that cool? He's an yeah, artist. I like really it. Very talented. So I always carry a knife and a lighter on my person. Right. So you kind of bypass the shoes kind oh. of quickly. What okay. uh, I'm guessing that's what you would probably refer to as a luxury item. Shoes. I mean, I'm going to I'm going to have my backpacking shoes. A lot of people will hike in tennis shoes now, and that's fine if they if they are not worried about ankle support. I always bring an extra pair of shoes that I can use for creek crossings that I can hike in if. I get blisters, which I don't very often. I, I use two socks. I just tend not to get blisters very often. I'm okay. lucky that way. But if I did and I needed to change things up, I have something I could I could hike in that would protect my feet. Right. So is that you? do you see that being a common thing as a luxury mm -hmm. item? And does everybody have their own luxury a lot item? Of, a lot of people will bring shoes that they can change into at the end of the day yeah. um, for camp shoes. Luxury items, though... Um, kind of different for everybody. My, I like to have a hot breakfast, so a stove is essential, but it's also a luxury item. You really have to have a stove. You can eat cold food, but to me, part of the joy of backpacking is having a cup of coffee in the morning and having a hot breakfast. Right. So to me, I hate to leave that out. Um, keeping salt will keep you from feeling crummy in the afternoon. Uh, so an electrolyte tablet or a salty snack Something like that will keep your morale up. I always keep blister stuff in here because that can make you feel unhappy if you get blisters, you know, just a way to, to protect your feet. My husband really likes to bring a camp chair. Yeah. He doesn't like to sit on the ground. Um, so he's got a chair. That's his luxury that, for item. For him, that's a sure. luxury item. Everybody I has. have a friend who is a really good artist, and she always brings uh, watercolor. She has a little portable <laughs> watercolor kit. So she so paints she while can, she's out there? Yeah, so yeah, she cool. can stop. Now, on to, we've got people, from, a lot of people from Kentucky, because mm -hmm. uh, we're in Kentucky, that follow us as well as people outside of Kentucky. If there was a place that you love to go in Kentucky to hike, where would it be? Well, I've been hiking the Sheltoe Trace, which uh, doesn't narrow things down because it runs from Moorhead into the Big South Fork in Tennessee. Right. One of my favorite parts of it probably is the section just north of Laurel Lake between uh, 192 coming out of London and Van Hook Falls. So what about outside of Kentucky? That's harder to pick. <laughs> okay. Nearby, um, I've done some sections of the AT. Yeah. I'm going to be down in Damascus again next week, and that section is really beautiful. You've got some of the vistas of the Blue Ridge, you know, the... Uh, Appalachian Mountains that are right. really pretty. Um, the ponies, the wild ponies. So that's oh wow, really do you see them often down yeah. there? Oh nice. Near Damascus, if you hike north of Damascus into Mount Damascus, Rogers. where? Where's I'm sorry, Damascus, Virginia. Okay, okay, cool. And it's only like five or six hours from here. So yeah, it's nice. pretty accessible. 
I grew up out west, actually. I'm from Utah originally. Yeah. And when I was a kid, we'd go backpacking at Arches National Park. So that's always going to have a special place sure. in my heart. The desert is kind of where I learned how to backpack. Right. So. The last question would be, if you had one piece of advice that you could share with everybody about backpacking, hiking, whatever it be, what would it be? Do it. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Just do uh, it? Well, Just do it! Uh, get your stuff, get get your 10 essentials together, make yeah. sure that you have the things that you need, and if you go with a group, you know, you'll have some people that are total gearheads, and they're just like, well, what kind of yeah. Yeah. tent do you have? Well, mine's a blah, blah, blah. And don't get caught up in that nonsense. Just right. get out there, you know, get, get the things you need together to be safe, but get out there and start backpacking. And even if you don't have the lightest... You know, your pack weight's probably going to be a little heavy when you first start. Yeah. Um, but once you get into it, if you find that you really love it, then you can slowly invest in lighter backpack, a lighter tent, a lighter sleeping bag. It's pay more for less. <laughs> for the lighter stuff, you're yeah. going to pay a lot more. Yeah. yeah, you do. Cool. Anything else you'd like to finish up with? Bring a tarp of uh, various size. If it's just myself hiking, I'll bring a small one. If it's really pouring rain, sometimes you just need to get out of the rain. And also, very importantly, to hang a bear bag when you're backpacking. I love backpacking, it's super fun. Fantastic, and I, I really, really appreciate, appreciate it. you bringing me here. It's yeah, to so, talk about this. no, absolutely. Uh, it's been many, many years since I did a lot of backpacking, so I thought we'd get you on here because I know a lot of people have been asking us questions. Here's what you can also do below the video, you can post some questions, and if I can't answer them for you, I'll get in contact with Tally and we'll get her um, throwing some good information our way. So thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. Appreciate it.